dear students i welcome you in the another session of traffic engineering and management so in the last session we had started our new module that is parking study now we all know that where there are various kind of studies that are required to be learned in order to get thorough knowledge about the subject traffic engineering and management which kind of surveys we have learned till date we have learned about traffic volume study speed study flow study then we have learned about vsfo origin and destination study and now we are discussing about the parking studies we have learned that what are the ill effects of parking what is the importance of parking now in this session what we are going to do is we are going to learn the various types of parking so let us begin the session the module states for parking studies and in this session what we are going to cover is we are going to cover the various types of parking first is called as on street parking and then we'll discuss about the design standards for the on street parking see on street parking is also called as the parking where the vehicles are parked on the side of the streets itself so it is about on street parking this classification is based on the angle so this is another important word that this is based on angle in which the vehicles are parked with respect to the road alignment as per indian road congress the standard dimension of a car which is considered for providing the parking is 5 by 2.5 meters and if truck is there then the dimension standard dimension is 3.75 by 7.5 meters so these are the minimum standard dimension for car and truck respectively whenever we are discussing about the on street parking for car and trucks now as i have discussed that this is also called as angle parking in this parking the vehicles are parked with certain with, with certain respective angles with with respect to the road alignment the first is called as parallel parking in this parking the vehicles are parked along the length of the road means like this if this is the length of the road so vehicles will park like this see this is the length of the road so vehicles will park in this direction so it would be like it would be like this this is called as parallel parking in this there is no back, backward movement involved while parking and other parking of the vehicle and so that it is the most safest parking from the accident perspective which is the most safest parking according to accident perspective it is the parallel parking why because there is no backward movement involved while parking or on parking of the vehicle so it is like this see it looks like this it consumes maximum curb length now you know that th this particular thing is called as curb so it consumes the maximum curb length and so only minimum number of vehicles can be parked so this is another question that which is the safest car parking it is parallel car parking with respect to accident scenario in which parking the maximum curb length is consumed maximum curb length is consumed in parallel parking in which car parking minimum number of cars can be parked for the given curb length so it is again parallel parking now then comes the 30 degree parking in this you can see that if this is the road the vehicles are parked with respect to 30 degree to the road alignment as i have already mentioned that the vehicles are parked at 30 degree with respect to the road alignment see if 90 parallel would be there only this much of vehicles would be parked but if 90 30 degree is there then you can see that instead of this much space only this much space is be consumed so this is the free space that we are getting for the each parked car so 
with comparison of parallel parking more vehicles can be parked for the 30 degree parking then comes the 45 degree parking see as soon as the angle is increased the number of parking also increased the number of accumulated car also increased so as the angle of parking increases more number of vehicles can be parked hence compared to parallel parking and 30 degree parking more vehicles can be accommodated for 45 degree parking because the angle is more as compared to 30 and parallel then comes the 60 degree parking for the 60 degree parking the angle is again higher than 45 and 30 so the vehicle should be quite higher than 45 30 and parallel and then comes the right angle parking that stands for 90 degree parking it looks like this so the vehicles are parked like this if this is the road they would be parked if this is the alignment so they would be parked according to 90 degree see maximum number of vehicles would be parked though it consumes the maximum width but length requirement is quite less but it can cause accidents because while maneuvering the vehicles means while taking the what I can say while moving the steering it can cause complexity so 90 degree has more parking than 60 degree has more than 45 is more than 30 is more than panel so vehicles can be parked maximum with respect to 90 degree and least with respect to parallel so this is about the on street parking that we have discussed till date then comes the off street parking and its design standard the completely opposite scenario of on street parking is called as off street parking in many urban areas some areas are exclusively allotted for the parking which will be set at some distance away from the main stream of traffic. Such parking is called as off-street parking. It can be operated by either private companies or government agencies or public agencies. So you will learn with respect to the examples only. First is called as surface car parks. It is like this. Just like the car parking we have which has been provided in the LJ Institute that is called a surface car park where the separate area is allocated probably located at the vacant piece of land the stall size is 2.5 by 5 meter as far as Indian conditions are concerned so surface car park means that is separate web vacant land allocation then comes the another that is called as multi story so you have learned about this like this it is popular in the mega cities such as mumbai delhi chennai and mangalore nowadays this is also can be observed in ahmedabad surat and vadodara in ahmedabad in navarangpura area there is a multi level car parking provided by amc if you visit Navarangpura, you can go to that place and you can observe the practical scenario. Then comes the multi-story car parks desirable standard. So, if this kind of car parking is provided, multi-level or multi-story, then we have to keep in mind certain design standards. So, which are those design standards? It is like this, that the gradient of ramp. Ramp means you will move to the particular story like this this will be the slope that is called as ramp so the gradient of ramp is called as it should be 1 is to 10 means 10 horizontal to 1 vertical then the clear height between the floors clear height between the floor should be 2.1 meters here we are discussing in meters not in feet then the parking stall dimension should be 2.5 by 5 we have already discussed then the inside radius of curve should be 7 meters width of lane should be 3.75 meter means single lane with race curve like that 
then gradient of sloping floor not steeper than 1 is to 20 otherwise it may cause accidents then the loading standard each area should accommodate 400 kg per meter square of loading standard for for the multi story car parking these are the desirable standards then comes the roof park Roof park provides the parking of car like this where the separate space is allocated for the car parking. It is the extensive system which is being used in the Conventry UK. Nowadays you can also observe this thing in Shimla Kurumanali region also in Uttarakhand and in Himachal Pradesh. Then comes the mechanical car park. It looks like this that you have to place your car over here then it will be lifted to here to here from here to here. So it is like this. It provides the lifting of cars from one floor to another floor by means of mechanical operated transfer dollies and credits. Then comes the underground car parks. We all have observed this at various kind of multiplexes, hospitals, etc. places. This is called as underground car parking. Then the last but not the least is called as peripheral parking system. See, there is a great parking problem whenever we discuss about the center of the town. So, it becomes essential to provide the parking at the periphery of the town and to indu that induces the motorists to park there and travel to the busy town center by various modes such as public transport vehicles. The first is called as park and walk, where the motorists are induced to park the vehicle as periphery of the outskirt of the town and then they have to come to the center by walking. Then comes park and ride where the motorized people, the people who are having vehicle will park their vehicle at the peripheral facility and they can come to the parking to the center of the city with the help of public transport such as BRTS, AMTS, BTS etc. This is attractive scheme, uh, scheme because it also increases the usage of public transport. Then the third is called as kiss and ride. It is the found name found from the goodbye kiss in which a wife drop her husband by the car near a bus stop and then it receives from the particular station. And then the fourth and last but not the least is called as drop and ride. It is the designated area identified by the signboard for parents. Here the parents will keep up, pick up their uh, children or they will drop their children. And from there the metro stations or hospital or malls will be connected with the help of various kind of public transport facilities. So this is about types of parking system. I hope you have understood the concept thoroughly. Thank you so much.